as you have internet connectivity, you are able to improve the social, the political, the economic life of people. And this is true worldwide. It can cost anywhere from like $100,000 to a million dollars to build a cell phone tower somewhere. And to build a radio tower is in the realm of like tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. A typical satellite system costs about 80,000 rupees to set it up and 3,000 to 4,000 rupees per month to lease the equipment. Each cell phone provider has something called the ARPU, the average revenue per user. And in developing countries like in India, for example, the ARPU is $8 a month. When you're talking to somebody who's making a dollar a day, two dollars a day, eight dollars a month for communication is not something that they want to willingly spend. And what we're saying is, well, you can do it far cheaper. We can do it for two dollars a year. We are basically trading off delay with cost. So it's saying that, okay, uh, introduce some delay in the system. Even if you get the mail one day later or two days later, it's still fine. But your cost is drastically reduced. VLink is an open source networking architecture developed at the University of Waterloo in Ontario, Canada. VLink was designed to bring electronic communication to the world's poorest rural regions. VLink is free, secure, easy to set up, runs on Linux and Windows, and requires no special hardware. In fact, using VLink can be hundreds of times cheaper than traditional dial up, VSAT, GPRS, or long range Wi Fi connections. How is this possible? Well, VLink uses something called Delay Tolerant Networking, or DTN. The idea is this connection is as valid as connection. Now, why this is important in terms of reducing cost is because if you can tolerate disconnections, you can live with a flaky connection. And flaky connections are cheaper than reliable connections. Because VLink supports DTN, you can use dedicated options like VSAT or Wi-Fi. But the connections don't need to always be working. If a connection goes down, VLink will wait until the connection is established again to finish what it was doing. We call this TCP Link. But even unreliable dedicated connections can be expensive. So VLink supports the transfer of data over SMS and USB memory sticks. SMS Link uses an attached Nokia mobile phone to quickly and reliably transmit data. Because the data rate of SMS Link is only about 160 BPS, SMS Link is most useful for small messages that need to be delivered right away. For photos, videos, applications and messages that don't need to be delivered immediately, we've developed KeyLink. KeyLink uses inexpensive USB memory sticks to store and forward large amounts of data from one location to another. KeyLink has several advantages over simply using USB keys to ferry data. With KeyLink, files are encrypted and transferred automatically. Multiple keys can be used in any order. The sender gets an acknowledgement that the recipient received the data and the files are processed automatically upon receipt. KeyLink requires no additional infrastructure to work, not even a phone line. In its simplest form, VLink can be used by an NGO with its headquarters in a city to provide email service to a field office in a rural village. For example, say a medical NGO called Better Health India wanted to give a nurse working in a satellite office some way to consult with a doctor in the UK, but was only able to get an internet connection at its headquarters in town and not at the village where the nurse works. Provided that both locations already have a PC running Windows, the only additional hardware required is a USB memory stick, which can be purchased for as low as $5. However, at Better Health India, there are times when urgent messages must be sent to the nurse right away. So we are going to connect two SMS-capable phones, one at the village computer and one at the head office computer to enable SMS link. The V-Link software itself can be downloaded for free and set up in a few minutes using the on-screen prompts. In order for V-Link to work, the software must be installed on both computers. Once installed, V-Link becomes almost completely transparent to the user. In our example, the nurse at the satellite office is instructed to record all of her checkups on video. When she encounters symptoms she's unfamiliar with, she can compose an email to a doctor in the UK asking for advice on how to treat the patient and attach the video file to this message. Later, when a courier or the nurse herself is returning to the head office, she plugs a USB memory stick into the village computer's USB port and a secure copy of her message is automatically transferred onto the USB stick. 
The nurse then makes the journey back to the head office, and once there, simply plugs the USB stick into the office computer. V-Link automatically decrypts the email and sends it to the doctor in the UK. From the doctor's point of view, the message from the nurse arrives like any other email. After reading the message and watching the video, the doctor has enough information to make an accurate diagnosis. She then responds to the nurse with the instructions on how to treat the patient. Because the doctor has noticed something serious about the patient's condition, she decides that the message needs to be delivered to the nurse right away, and so she sets the priority level to high before she sends the message. The doctor's email is sent back to Better Health India's head office, but because the message has a high priority and is only text, it will be sent immediately over SMS to the satellite office instead of waiting for the next USB stick to be plugged in. The nurse now has all of the information she needs to treat the patient. V-Link is not limited to providing email access to a single computer in a rural village. V-Link can support multiple field offices that all share the same internet connected proxy computer at the head office. And the USB memory sticks don't need to go directly from each field office to the proxy. They can be connected in any order to multiple rural workstations before eventually going back to the head office. V-Link today ships with fully functioning email, but because V-Link is open source and built to be easily extensible, developers are encouraged to create entirely new applications that take advantage of the system. Internet is useful so that uh, healthcare workers can gather epidemiological data, so that farmers know the price of their crops, so that um, you can distribute continuing medical education and e-learning tools to all these rural villagers. To me, uh, being able to communicate is a means to, to trade, to conduct commerce, and for the economy to grow. So I see low-cost communication as a, you know, as a multiplier in the economy. Villagers may be willing to take a picture of their product and uh, send it to the internet. So it's not that just deploying a communication system is going to solve the world's problems. It's not like that, but it can help many other things work better, work more efficiently. We think that by supporting email robustly as we have, we're opening the door to a lot of different applications. We would like developers to develop more applications, but at this point, what we want is people to go to our website, download the software, install it, and go. For more information about VLink or to download the software for free, visit the University of Waterloo's Tetherless Computing Lab at blizzard.cs.uwaterloo.ca slash tetherless.